I'm Niall, I'm the Assistant Curator at Nottingham Contemporary and I'm going to talk a little bit about Miriam Banani's exhibition, Life on the Caps. Miriam Banani is a New York-based Moroccan-born artist and this exhibition is her first solo exhibition in a UK museum. This exhibition presents two chapters out of a trilogy of film works that explore life on a fictional island set in the Atlantic called the Caps. One of the films which you'll see in the exhibition called Life on the Caps is a co-commission with the Renaissance Society in Chicago, where it was previously on display from the 26th of February until the 17th of April of this year. The exhibition has been co-curated by Nicole Yip and Olivia Hearn. The exhibition explores a speculative future world. In this world, technological advancements have established teleportation as a standard mode of transport. Biotechnology has advanced so that people can now buy new bodies and extend their natural lifespans. Borders no longer exist as lines on a map, but rather as gigantic magnetic fields. And the US now has a brigade of drone troopers who patrol the skies and interrupt illegal teleportations. Through storytelling, Banani explores experiences of displacement and longing, of resilience and perpetual transition. Her work draws from multiple sources, including documentary, reality TV, advertising, and the experiences of people in her life. Her films are often displayed in large multi-channel video installations, which often incorporate sculptural elements such as stools or unique methods of viewing. Within the films, real life footage is expanded upon through special effects and animation. And Miriam often works with family and friends from her hometown in Morocco or rappers and artists that she encounters online. When working with people that she knows, Miriam tends to develop a script with some general key phrases or outlines, and then she allows the people working with her to improvise and develop their own interactions. Banani has described this method of working as a mix between documentary and role play, and in collaborating with friends and family, she feels it's important for them to be able to bring issues from their own lives into the films and onto the caps itself. The exhibition starts in Gallery 1 with Banani's acclaimed eight-channel video installation Party on the Caps from 2018 to 2019, and this film work explores themes of post-colonial dispossession and resilience. This film is the first chapter of the trilogy and it is set on the fictional island of the Caps. Originally the Caps started off as an internment camp where people who were intercepted mid-teleportation by the troopers were beamed down to the Caps and held there. They can't leave because there's no way to teleport off the island and the magnetic field prevents them from doing so. So what started as an internment camp on this island across the span of three generations has become a bustling metropolis and um, there's different community areas where um, neighbourhoods formed like the Moroccan neighbourhood, the Tunisian neighbourhood and throughout the Caps its own culture has developed as well. The film is narrated by an animated crocodile called Fiona and Fiona is almost like a mascot for the Caps and will quite proudly tell us that she even features on her own branded cereal box too. The process of being intercepted mid-teleportation actually causes a lot of people to suffer with afflictions such as plastic face syndrome. They might not have a body at all uh, or they might have enlarged organs or different facial features too. This chapter in the trilogy really forms a moment of joyful resistance uh, some of the Caps residents from the Moroccan neighbourhood of the island have gathered toge together to celebrate. And the reason why they're celebrating is because one of the um, characters in the film, a pharmacist, who's actually played by Miriam's own mother, has bought her mother in the film a new body. So a lot of the community have gathered together to sing and celebrate their dancing. And there's a lot of, a lot of happy moments. And despite all of the surveillance and everything that's happening in the world around them, they're still gathering together as a community and having these really important moments. The MC of the party is actually a real life rapper called Lil Patty, who is somebody that Miriam came across when searching online and browsing through YouTube. And this is something that quite often happens with Miriam's work, where she will bring in people and allow them to play characters of themselves. In Gallery 2, we are presenting the final chapter in the Caps trilogy, which represents a new direction for Marion Banani's work, in that it is a large single channel video installation. And it also includes a live score, which has been created in collaboration with the producer Fatima Al Qadiri. The final chapter expands on Marion's previous focus on biotechnology, surveillance, and displacement. And throughout the film, we will see 
it is much more focused on protest and resistance. And we will be following a group, a group of CAPS residents who are planning a protest against the trooper drones. This film is following the story of Kamal, a 65 year old who has bought himself a new body. And throughout the film, we also see some tensions and conflict rising between Kamal and his son Amin. As they're now both at a similar age physically, they are kind of questioning ideas of extending life, their natural life. Kamal is very much interested in carrying on resistance and protest beyond his natural lifespan. Whereas Amin has an outlook where he would quite like to complete what he wants to do within his lifespan and then pass on naturally. Throughout the film, we kind of follow the development of the protest as the CAPS residents regularly meet. Um, they are often having to meet at nighttime or in areas that are hidden, or they will use cloaking technology to just hide themselves from the um, scouting troopers as they're flying by um, to try and draw people out and provoke the CAPSI residents. The troopers will actually play their own music. Um, this is a technique that they've used to try and provoke uh, reactions, try and get people to give themselves up so that they can enact whatever punishment. The film culminates in the final moments of protest, which takes place on the island in a new car sales room, which has been built by the Americans and the troopers um, as a place for themselves to buy luxury cars. Um, this is a theme that comes up in the film quite a lot, is that a lot of old materials or a lot of old vehicles are kind of dumped on the Caps Island and it's left to the residents to deal with those. The protest itself actually makes use of an ancient traditional music from Morocco called Deca. And this is what the Capsi residents have chose to use as a way to speak out and tell their own story.